everybody. Welcome to The Bottom Line. We're glad you could be with us today. I'm Susan. This is my husband, Jim. And we always come and bring truths from the Word of God that we believe can, can make such an impact in your life. You know, we, we like to think about it as appropriating the Word of God. Yes. You know, you're making the Word of God your, your actual handbook in life. And so every week when we come, you know, we, we have things that we think will really, really impact your life in that way. That's right. And so That's exactly right. You know, and we're, we're talking about today, we want to talk about, what, what did you name we're gonna, it? We're going to call this one, Who Are You? Who Are You? Everybody's trying to find himself. That's right. Um, you know, you look around and you can tell our world is confused about who yeah, they are. That's right. Okay. So all right, my, my baby brother, who is uh, eight years younger than me, when he was in high school, he would go around and, I mean, he, he just, he would say, be who you are. <laughs> and I used to think, well, that is about the dumbest thing I have ever heard of. How can you be anything Anybody other than who you are? Who you are. Yeah. But, as I, but after I got filled with the Holy Ghost and I began to study the Bible, I began, I began to find out most people really aren't who they are. Yeah. You know, you sent me something yesterday. I'm going to read that to you. Oh, good. This That's is from a good. book called Moving Your Invisible Boundaries. Moving Your Invisible uh -huh. Boundaries. And I believe that the guy's name is Jim Richards, I think. But this is out of that book. Here's, here's what it says. It says, then he goes on, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It is crucial that we recognize the word transformed. This is the word metamorphosis. This, does not, this is not the kind of change where you are trying to become something you are not. It is the process whereby what you are changes you. The caterpillar doesn't become a butterfly. The caterpillar is a butterfly in a different state. When we yield to the righteousness of God already in us, it transmutes us to manifest outwardly what God has already made us to be inwardly. That is... I have never heard it put just like that. Isn't that good? That is so good. You're becoming who you are. Yeah. Because when you when you make the choice that Jesus is your Lord, yeah. you got born again. Born again. And you know, we always talk about that with the, the caterpillar and the butterfly, butterfly. because uh -huh. that's what it it is exactly that. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. But but this is such a, uh, it's not like you're working at becoming. You're becoming who you are. Yeah, you, you're, yeah. already, you're already you're that. Already, you're already that. Yeah. So on the inside, it's, it's amazing. But, you know, if you, if you stop and think about this, uh -huh. when God created Adam and Eve. That's right. Back in the very beginning, everything they would ever need was already there. Mm -hmm. He did that before. He ever created. He did. It was already there. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you and I got born again, when we said, Jesus, come into my heart, and we were born again, became a new creature in Christ, everything that we would ever need is now on the inside of us. It's like a, it's like a supernatural deposit. Yes. It's just placed in us to, to be who we are. That's right. It, and it, so, and it all comes, and, and I mean, we, we talk about this and talk about this and talk about this, and, and, and I never tire of talking about it, but it, it, it happens as we renew our minds. Right. As we, as, we, as we go to the Word of God. Well, here it is in James. Uh, okay, be before you get to okay. James, look, you can even, we can use our own lives as an example, because I, I know you like to tell a story about how the pastor came out to your house. Yeah. Okay, and you were what, 12? 12 years old. And so Jim recognized Jesus yes, I did. as Lord. Okay, he made the great confession that day. And then how many years passed? About 10. About 10 years passed. And he, for all practical circumstances, looking at him and watching him and being with him was the same. But 10 years after that, he found out about the Word of God. Yes, that's right. And that's when the transformation began. Everything changed. Yeah. And so, so the deposit for the trans, 
transformation was made when you made that confession, when you realized, Jesus, he is the Christ. When you, when you recognize that, the deposit is made in you, but then steps you must take would be re renewing your mind to the, to the truth, to that, the Word of God. On that Sunday afternoon in August of 1958, mm -hmm. that Sunday afternoon, God was began the process of changing me to who I really was. Right. And it goes on and on. Here, James chapter 1, verse... You know what? I think I have one more thing to say okay. about that. Okay. I'm sorry if I, I keep interrupting. But you, know, you think about it like this. Think about, think about your... People get an inheritance, yeah. right? And you know, everybody, you know, you, you watch these movies where, where they go for the reading of the, the will. Mm -hmm. Okay, until the will was read, they really didn't know for sure what yeah. they had. That's right. I mean, it's kind of like that with us. It is. We have all these things in Christ Jesus, but until we read the will, here's, here's the will right here. That's the will. Yeah. Until we read it, we're not even aware of what all is actually available to us. Right. Okay, now you can read right. James, and I'm not going to interrupt you anymore. James chapter <laughs> 1, verse 22. This is New King James. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. So he says here, what does he say? He says, you've got to go to the Word of God. That's right. You've got to look into it and see who you are. Mm -hmm. It reflects who you are. But if you, do, if, you, if you walk away from it, you forget who you are. Yeah, that is, yeah, that's exactly how it is. And that's, that you're right. Or yeah. The Passion Translation says it this way. Don't just listen to the word of truth and not respond to it, for that is the essence of self-deception. So always let his word become like poetry written and fulfilled by your life. If you listen to the word and don't live out the message you hear, you become like a person who looks in the mirror of the word to discover the reflection of his face in the beginning. You perceive how God sees you in the mirror of the word. But then you go out and forget your divine origin. But those who set their gaze deeply into the perfecting law of liberty are fascinated by and respond to the truth they hear and are strengthened by it. They experience God's blessing in all that they do. Okay, so you know, see, you can just see right there where when you make this great confession, when you have this revelation that Jesus is the Christ mm -hmm. like Jim did when he was 12, but then if you don't at that if you don't pick up the word of God, you kind of forget. And I remember when I met you, I'm not sure you even knew you were born again by then. <laughs> well, you I know? knew it, but it, I wasn't. You know what I'm saying yeah. though? I mean yeah. and me the same. We were the same. But I was about as worldly as you could be. Yeah, get. yeah. So the transformation is ready to take place when the person looks in the mirror. That's right. Yeah. That's, That's good. Right. That's so good. Okay, let's look at John. This is my absolute favorite verse in the entire Bible. I know it, I know it. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Free. Every, I, everybody love, wants to be free. That's right. I love the Passion Translation. It says, Jesus said to those who believed in him, When you continue to embrace that means accept. And, mm -hmm. and all that I teach, you prove that you are my true followers. For if you embrace the truth, it will release more freedom into your lives. That's good. Isn't mm -hmm. it? So that embracing is, you know, like earlier I said, we were endeavoring to talk to you about appropriating yes. the Word of God. It's the same thing, you know, making it your own. Hey, this is my Bible. That's right. You know, I remember John Osteen used to start his service like that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if his brother Joel does it or not, but he would hold up his Bible and say, this is my Bible. I believe it's, it is the Word of, it God. Is the word yeah. of God. And I can have what it says I can have, and I can do what it says yeah. I can. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Praise the Lord. And so, but, but it, the important thing is, is to know who you are. Yep, you got to know. You have.
have to know who you are. Mm -hmm. So Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. In other words, whatever is in your heart is who you are mm -hmm. or who you will be or what you will do. Right. So it's important that you and I are continually putting this word into our heart. That's right. It determines who we are and what we do. Right? Uh, yeah, and you know, maybe we ought to just read Romans 12, 1. <clears throat> what do you think? Okay. Because it's talking about as you think in your heart. And this one says, um, Romans 12, 1, it says, uh, well, he's talking about don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. That's right. Changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. That's right. And the way you, let, the way you change the way you think is by learning to think like this. That's right. That's what by you what do. what God says, not what your circumstances say. Mm -hmm. Right? That's good. Okay. So let's, let's talk about a few things that we need to, to know and understand about this be, being the, the real you. Who we really are. Who you really are. Yeah, we're fixing to disclose your identity. That's right. You've got to find out who you really That's are right. today. Well, the first one is, I am a new creation. I am a new person. Now that's, that's, that's wonderful. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Just like mm -hmm. when that baby comes out of the mother's womb, they don't have a past. That's they, right. They are a new creation. creation. And notice it says creation. Yes. That means like never before That's right. existed. That's right. Brand new. Brand new. Mm. And you know, you could even, you know, again, we can go back to your example or that we like to share about you getting born again, mm -hmm. even though 10 years passed before Jim made a conscious effort to renew his mind, even though he wasn't diligent about it, he was still this new creation. That's right, I was. He was still that. I just didn't know it. That's right. I knew I was born again, but I didn't really understand what that meant. That's right. I mean, I knew I was going to heaven. Yeah, you knew that. But that's all I knew. I mean, but my goodness, there's so much more. Yeah, that's right. Okay, that's really good. You're a new creation. Brand new. So Brand new. next time somebody says, who are you? I'm a new creation. Okay. I remember uh, David Engel singing those songs about I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new mm -hmm. man. Old yeah. things are passed away. I've been born again. Right. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, go ahead. I am the salt of the earth. Okay, we know what salt does, right? Salt preserves <clears throat> and salt flavors. That's right. Okay, here's what the verse in the Bible says about that. Matthew 50, is Matthew 5, 13. It says, you are the salt of the earth. Who are you? Say, I'm the salt of the I'm earth. The salt of the earth. It says, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It's been good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. I'm just going to say this. If you renew your mind, you're going to be flavorful. Oh, that's right. You're not going to be this one that's trampled underfoot. You are the salt of the earth. That's who you are. That's what you were put here that's to right. be. That's right. See, and here's the thing about it. As we go through these things, there's a lot of them here. You and I need to begin to confess who we are. That's right. Yeah. We need to begin to say it mm -hmm. because by saying it and confessing it, it's putting it down in our heart. That's right. And so, see, what we're trying to do is we're trying to go from the caterpillar state to the butterfly state. But actually, you don't have to try to do it. it that's right. But as you renew your mind, it, it will just happen. As you renew your mind. If you don't ever renew your mind, that's right. You're going to stay in the caterpillar state. Yeah. But it says you renew your mind that you become the butterfly, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, a new creation. A new creation. I'm a new creation. All right. So here's another one, kind of like the salt of the earth, that I'm the light of the world. This is the same, same thing in Matthew chapter 5. It says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men 
that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. In heaven. And I know, you know, they're saying, well, I, you know, I'm not the light of the world. Well, he said right there that you are. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. And if Jesus said you are, then you must be. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. I mean, he didn't say you might be. He said you are. You are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. And he has this part where he says, you, know, you don't light a lamp and put it on under a basket. That's right. So, you know, a lot of times we'll talk to our kids about, you got to let, let your light shine. Let your light shine. You know, you mm -hmm. have to let your light shine. And that's just, you know, you walk about daily and you uh, exhibit love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and all those things. Your light is shining. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. <coughs> people talk about, you know, the light, this, that, and other, and oh, it's just getting dark, as the world's getting darker and darker. <laughs> well, really, that's good, because as the world gets darker and darker, your light is getting brighter and brighter. And you think about it, your light always affects the darkness. Yes, it does. I mean, it might not even be a big light, but you can take a room that's totally 100% dark and just flick on a flashlight, that's and right. it's Wow. The light pushes back the darkness. It does. It pushes Always. it back. The That's darkness who... never, listen to me, the darkness never overcomes the light. That's right. So who are you, Jim? I am the light of the world. You're the light of the world. That's good. I think I'll just let my light shine. <laughs> Do that. Okay, here's another one. Okay. Oh, this one is so good. It says, I'm a child of God. Boy, just say that to yourself a few times. I'm a child, I'm a child of, of God. God. God is my daddy. No longer a slave to sin. Right. I'm a child of God. Okay, John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, But as many as received him, them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. I That's am a good. child of God. God, God, almighty God the creator of heaven and earth and everything that you see is my daddy. That's right. <clears throat> and you, you know, you think about how a child and a dad, just naturally speaking in, in a family, the child comes in and he it doesn't have any qualms about asking his dad for anything. Nope. You know, he's mm -hmm. yeah, and he knows his dad's going to do it, right? That's right. That's right. Okay, so that's who you are. You are a child of God. Say, I'm a child of God. That's right. That's I'm a good. child of God. You I'm know, a you child stop of thinking, God. Here's a good illustration. You have children. Okay. Whatever age, doesn't matter. They go to the refrigerator, and they open the refrigerator, and there's all kinds of stuff in there. There's fruit in there. There's milk. Milk. And, eggs. And, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what they do? They see something they like, they just take it out. They receive it. And they just use it. Well, how are they able to do that? Because they were part of the family, mm -hmm. and it was all—it was—it was theirs because they're part of the family, mm -hmm. right? That's right. Same way with us. God has has given us everything that we will ever need. Mm -hmm. Everything. It's already—it's already available. He's not going to have to create something. Mm -hmm. It's already there. So, and, and, and He did it for us. That's right. Now you might need to know it's there. I'm going to guarantee you that child knew what was in that refrigerator. Yes, that's right. How did that's they exactly know? Right. How did they know? Well, because they had spent time looking in it before. Well, how do you? How are we going to know what is really ours? We're going to read the Bible. That's right. And we're going to find out what really belongs to us as children of God, and then we're going to we're going to accept those things. That's right. Like James said, you got to look into that mirror. Mm -hmm. As long as you're looking in that mirror, you know what you look like. That's right. You but know who moment, you are. But the moment you walk away, yeah. I mean, you may have, you, you may vaguely remember. As long as you're looking in that mirror, you know exactly, exactly what you look like, exactly. But once you turn away, that begins to fade away. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, David, the psalmist said, I hide God's word in my heart. And, of course, he was saying, so I might not sin against God. But that same passage also says that the Word was a lamp unto his feet, a light unto his path. The Word of God is so valuable. It's your, it's your handbook for life. Yes. It's the thing that tells you who you are. It's the thing that, that is transforming you from 
that state of being a caterpillar right. into a butterfly who is free. That's right. Okay. Well, let's, let's skip down here a little bit. Here's one. It says, I am a joint heir with Christ, sharing his inheritance with him. A joint heir. So, Romans 8, 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So, if, what does it mean, Susan, if you are a joint heir? What does that mean? Okay, well, that means that whatever the inheritance is, it's, it's mine too. That's right. Yeah. You know, and you can, you know, there's a lot of ways to study this. You know, you can study the life of Abraham. And you can see a lot of things there just, you know, about right. his inheritance and all the things that God said to him, you know, and he was called like the father of faith. Yes. You know, he trusted what God said. Well, the way we trust what God says today is by trusting his word. That's right. Yeah. That's where we find our inheritance. Where you're talking about Abraham. The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 3, he said, if, he said, then if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's, Abraham's seed, seed and, and heirs, heirs according, according to, to the, the promise. promise. Let me encourage you to go to your Bible and read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14. Right. And do yeah. that every day. When you, when you go there, you're going to notice there's a whole list of things that are called the blessing yes. of Abraham. And then, and, and they're just written out detailed so you will know for sure what they are. Right. And then there's also things called curses, which means, you know, we don't want that. you don't want that. You want to live in the blessing. You want to live in the inheritance right. you want to live your life like you're a joint heir with jesus that's right that's right so we are a joint heir with him so we got to continually look into that perfect law to that mirror so that i don't forget that i'm a joint heir with him and that i don't forget what god has made available to me right right and this this one right here is very similar to the one you just okay. did where you're talking about being a joint heir uh -huh. Okay, this one is, I'm an heir of God since I am the Son of God. This is Galatians right. chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. Then, and if a son, then an heir of God there you go. through so we're Christ. We're heirs. What does that mean to be an heir? That, means, there, you, one more that means you have an inheritance. That means we have an inheritance. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, uh, when do you get your inheritance? Well, we get it now. It's ours you, right now. You get an inheritance when someone dies. That's right. Who died? Uh, Jesus died for, for me. So the inheritance. So I get an inheritance. Of course, he rose from the dead. Yeah. But, but because he died, I get the inheritance. He mm -hmm. did that for me so I can have the inheritance. You know, God has, you know, I like to use this example. You know, the, the Bible says that my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Well, the, God wants to move. He, he put all this stuff on the inside of me. But in order for me to use it, i got to get rid of all the old stuff that was in there. Well, that new stuff is going to push that old stuff no, out. As, all, as I renew my mind, the new stuff pushes the old stuff out. That's yeah, right. it's, like, it's like a cup of water. Okay, and so the cup is nearly full. And so then you begin pouring in... Mm -hmm. And we're talking about the truth, the, truth. the word of God, mm -hmm. the blessings, the promises, finding out who you are, recognizing you're the salt, you're the light, you're the heir, you're the child of God. When you begin to meditate on all of that, it pushes out that stuff that said, you can't do anything Why you're just the scum of the earth. Mm -hmm. It pushes out that stuff that said, You'll never be able to accomplish this. You're not able. It just pushes it. Right. It just pushes it away. Yeah, people, people say, well, you know, God would never talk to me. Well, that's not what the Bible says. The and Bible you just says, keep pouring it in and it just overflows. That's right. The Bible says that, that Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. He so, did say that. Therefore, that means he's talking to you. The Bible says that in the very beginning, in the very beginning, God would come down says in the cool of the day i don't know exactly what that means but in the cool of the day god would come down and he would talk with adam and eve mm -hmm. he just wanted to fellowship with them he wanted to talk with them 
Mm-hmm. Like we talked about in one of our programs about first. Yeah. The, you know, first thing you do is, is talk to, have that talk time. To God. Have yeah. that time with God. But that's what God wants to do. And, and as His sheep, we hear His voice. Mm-hmm. And the way you can know how to hear His voice is what does this say? Because He will never speak outside of what this says. You know, you recognize any voice that you're accustomed to hearing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we've talked about this, like you can, you can be in a crowd of people and maybe, maybe, maybe your uh, husband is over there with another group. You immediately recognize his voice. Or, you know, like you can get a phone call and before they even tell you who they are, you know who they are because that. it's somebody you're familiar with. Right. It's the same way with God. The more time you spend in the Word of God, the easier it's going to be for you to recognize, oh, that's God talking to me. I heard him say this. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll know what he's saying because you're so familiar. You've heard his voice right here on these pages of this book. That's That's pretty good. uh, You're right, though. You you learn to people that you associate with, you you learn to recognize their voice. You know, I have customers at the pharmacy. If they call, they don't have to tell me who they are. That's right. I recognize their voice. That's right. You know, uh, and, and that's just the way it is with God. And Jesus, is he the one that said, the sheep hear my voice? Yeah, and and you won't voice. follow someone else the more you get accustomed and familiar that's, with God. That's right. Yeah. This is some good that's stuff right. we're talking yeah. about today. So here, who what, are you? That's right. We're talking You're gonna about say, today. Who are you? I am a salt. You're going to say, I'm the light. You You're going to say, I'm a new creation. Oh, you're going to say, I'm a child of God. God. Yeah, I mean, and, and the way you do that is, the mm-hmm. way you find out who you are mm-hmm. is by the Word of God. This, James yeah, said, just if, you so look into, simple. if you look into this mirror, as long as you're looking here, mm-hmm. you know who you are. So That's never right. stop looking. Never stop. Never stop. Susan, I will thank you for allowing us to be a part of your day. I ask that you prayerfully consider partnering with us here at the bottom line. If you have prayer requests, you can send them to us. Remember this, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you should know the truth, and the truth will set you free.